Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. everybody welcome back to the channel big hello to the new subscribers thank you for stopping in here and I hope everybody had a safe and wonderful Independence Day and uh, had fun lighting off all them bottle rockets and boom bang bing bang boom bang bing and sparklers and all that fun stuff and uh, To the winners of the giveaway, your stuff is on its way to you, and again, congratulations. Hope you enjoy that stuff. And uh, you say, but I, I didn't win no prize. What's up with that? I'm gonna give a lot more stuff away. You just stay tuned. We'll get you some prizes. I got a lot more stuff to give away, and I'm gonna do just that. So don't. Fret like my old frog out there on the porch. We got lots more stuff we're going to give away. I've been uh, looking around town and specifically looking for stuff that's made here. And when I say here, I don't mean in um, the wonderful country of America. And I don't mean here as in the uh, beautiful state of Alaska. I mean here as in my community and Kodiak Island. So I have found uh, a couple things I'm looking at picking up to give them away for some actual made on Kodiak prizes. So stay tuned for that. And But we're going to get back on this little Johnson 15 1994 being a pickle. I think we got the cooling uh, problem resolved it seems to run cold now or colder within standards in respect to the thermostat but uh, it's still on this this old carburetor needs attention so um, we're gonna get back on that open up this carburetor and see if we can find some issues or maybe something else who knows what it's gonna be we just gotta look but uh, we're going to get back on that, so let's get on it. Here's the little engine in questionis. You understand us. Right there. That little John slime. we got to get back on it. As you can see, I popped a carburetor off. And uh, right at the, at the get-go, I noticed this gasket here is a little bit on the deterioration side not very good so we'll replace that um, so we opened her up and nothing in there really uh, looks that bad uh, the, fo the floats a little bit you know out of level it should probably be about right there so we'll adjust that and see how it's leaning forward a little bit so we'll get it up to about right in there yeah so she's we can adjust that with that little tang right here on the back but overall I mean here's inside the bowl let me dump them screws out um, the bowl don't look bad there wasn't no obvious giant boogers or anything in there so Okay, I'm doing a combination of a compression test, spark test on this. These two wires, so the spark should be right in there. 
and let's get a compression. I'm on the uh, bottom and I'm zero. Hopefully you can see it. Well, if I plug my drill in, that would help for certain. Oh, certain. Okay. We got 95, about 100 on the bottom. And I didn't look at the spark. I forgot to. I can't even hardly see it. Let's see. We got good hot spark on both of them. And we got 100 PSI on the bottom. And let's see what we got on top of this puppy. You know, I mean, we know it runs, but it, it don't run well. But I, I don't see the compressionis being way bad or anything. But we're on the top, we are on zero. <laughs> good sparky, good sparky. And we got 95 on the top. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute here now. Let me do that again. That's at 65. What we got going on? What we got going on? We're on zero. <laughs> it don't feel like Yeah, we got 60 on the top. Yeah, it's not real good. Let me check the bottom once again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move my spark checker. We know we got good spark. It's just kind of in my way. So we got some good spark. On the bottom, okay, zero. <laughs> I wonder what's that doing at? Ninety, ninety-five. Hmm. Let me get a better socket. I'll be well, I decided I'm going to pull a head on it, and to do that, I don't have to take all this plastic off, but it just makes it a lot easier. Get you a nice long quarter inch extension, a T25 star Torx, and get them out. I think there's only about four of them or so. Now, for the one that's inside the bonnet, the way you do that is you move the P-tube, shove your extension up through, then put your T25 on, and then there's another one of these stars in here, Torx, and you get that one loose like that and get it out of there. So that one's loose now. Alrighty, alrighty. And where's the rest of them? I got that one. I got that one. And there's the other. And then we got some side ones. Right there. Plasticky wasticky. And we got a regular screw in there. I do believe. There we go. That holds. So 
I don't even know if I need really to take that out much further. There, that'll let me get to the head. But there is a screw right down in there for the latch, but that's all I need to do to get them. So drop her down about parade rest like that. And I'm gonna look inside that head. I'll be back. Alright, let's pop this head off of here. Get on the head bolt so I don't look uh, uh, ooze them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. Bring that around here. Let me get a rab, 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 rab. <laughs> and here's my gasket that fell out. Not the best looking gasket. But, hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm not seeing anything overly down here. You got some bulging and rusty looking stuff. Same here, same here, right there. But I don't see really any holes. But gosh, it's not in the best shape. Here's the other side. Well, let's look at these cylinders. Let's look at these cylinders. Okay, so it was the top that was giving us the 60 people. I can still see cross hatching in there. Real good, actually. Same with the bottom. Get off my glove. And the bottom we had ninety to a hundred. And you know it's got a little little rattling in the bottom and a little rattling in the top. I see no cleaning of the piston crowns indicating water. Yuck in the passages. Boop! Boop! It's my neighbor's dog over there, it never shuts up. Mm. 
blockage in there. So. He never shuts up. Sorry about that, YouTubers. And it's not the dog's fault. He's a sweet dog. It's, well, never mind. He's a sweet dog. He's a good old dog. Just kind of bored as he hangs out, I think. Maybe blow this out a little bit with some compressed air. And I'm going to try a new head gasket. So. I don't see. I don't see any markings on the head itself. But right here, right in between the cylinders, there is some real dark in there. There was hmm, some pitting in there. So I think I'm just going to clean everything up real good on both sides. The cylinder to me especially on the uh, okay, there's, there is some right there. There we go. So I may need to do a little honing. Let me get a flashlight. Get you in here. Okay. I'm going to try. No guarantees, but... Can you see the upper part of that cylinder? Can you see that? There's some... There's some not good right there. There's some scoring right there. Looks like a piece of carbon got in there or something. Right there. Let me look at the lower on that side. Let me get my flashlight. But yeah. It does look like a little scoring on that top cylinder on that that side there you see bottom looks good hard for me to yeah bottom looks good She definitely got hot before as well. I'm looking at that rubber right there. So, let me get everything out of my way. But definitely some. Oh yeah. And I can even. I can even feel it. Oh yeah, that's a bad chunk back there. It's weird. She's got some roughness right there on the upper cylinder up toward the exhaust side.
clean it up good. Clean it up good. Yeah, I see some yelp there too. All the white powder has to come off. We all know what it means when I wear this hat. It means it's Christmas in July. It means somebody came bearing the gifts. It's Christmas in July. Let's look at it. There she is. I don't get a lot of these around here. Um. A Tahatsu Gesundheit. Um, I don't get a lot of Tahatsus around here. This is a good old Tahatsu two stroker 18. And right there you can see it says M. Can't tell if that's an 8. I think it is. M18 as in 18 horsepower. 3. M18C2. And it is made in Japan from the Tahatsu Corporation. And uh, what I like about this engine, Daikom said he had three of them. I'm not sure if they were all Tahatsus or all 18s, but he said he had three outboards in his garage. And they'd been sitting there for years, and he's doing his spring cleaning. And he said, I want them out of here. And he gave a couple to somebody else, and then had this one in the back of his pick -em up truck, and said, I'll uh, stop by the old Cody Bass and see if he wants it. I said, yeah, I want it. Now, you say, wow, look at that. That's nice. Well, let me show you. Oh, I'm sorry. Caught, it, caught you with my foot. Oh, boy. Now, if you don't think there's a creepy crawly what gonna get me in there, then... Yeah, there's some creepy crawly action in there. Look at that carburetor. Oh my. So, first thing that I'll do is get some brake clean and start hammering away and see what kind of creepy crawlies fall out of there. Look at this shift rod here, solid rust. But this is actually how I like to get them. That way I know nobody's really been in there. It kills me how much these copied uh, the OMC engines. I mean, if you look at that T-stat right there where the 18 Evan Roods would be, uh, you know, not everything's different. They got the fuel, uh, the fuel pump is part of the carburetor. And, uh, let's see if she'll actually shift. I didn't check that. Oh, there's forward. Neutral. And reverse. I got reverse, I got neutral, and I got forward. Yep. So she shifts. Um, 
it says it should have B7HS-10 NGKs or Champion L82C. But check this out. As bad as she is. It feels like it's got good compressionis. So, like I said, I'll get me a can of brake clean and start hosing her down. They say cleanliness is next to godliness. All right, so pulled that head on that thing. Now keep in mind, this motor ran yucky, but it ran. So then I pulled the head off and I found the scoring on the uh, upper cylinder. But I just cleaned everything really good after giving it a light hone. I just cleaned everything. And uh, do you remember when I was taking that pick and cleaning those channels around the piston sleeves, the water? channels that run around the pistons and I dug all that salt out of there and everything um, so I, I probably didn't have the camera focused in on it maybe some of you guys caught it but I just now noticed it and that's why I like to get everything cleaned up really good it makes me slow down after I clean things and look really good and this engines basically done um, so, um, I've got a lot of wasted time on this motor. And that's how it goes sometimes. I'll show you. Ouch. All right. Do you see it? I sure do. Now, so I was focused on the uh, scoring all along here. <laughs> Look, here. See that busted. Busted. Look at that, them giant cracks. Busted. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't notice that right off the bat, but it was full of salt and everything. But uh, there's your... Now what that would do as far as compression, I, I am not sure. I mean obviously we don't have good compression on that top cylinder, but can you see them cracks? Right there. Oh 
all busted here all busted down here busted all to pieces Good boy. So the cylinder part actually honed up pretty good. But uh, wow. I don't know how far deep down them cracks go. I don't see any crack through the port through the ports there on the exhaust ports on the inner side of that. So I'm guessing they run down into couple inches or so down in there yeah it's hard for me to tell but boy they're busted all to pieces so water's gonna circulate then water's gonna try and get in the head gasket there Boy. Yeah. What a mess. That salt just, I'm guessing it was a combination of the salt and the heat. All that salt was in there. And that water started steaming with all that salt that I dug out of there. With that salt in there and that water steaming, it was just more than a little guy could take. Well, looks like that's going to be a wrap on this little 15 Johnson. Um, there's just too much carnage inside those, uh, in and around, not the cylinders. I think the cylinders would have bounced back, that top cylinder, even though it did have some pretty good scoring up there by the exhaust but uh it looks to me like this thing was all plugged full of salt and everything in those water passages and then it it got really really hot um i can't remember if i showed it in the video or not but there's there's some rubber melted parts in there and stuff between the salt blockage and then the overheat uh things just busted apart in there so i don't think the motor would be ever you know anything i'd ever want to put uh back in service and call reliable it does run uh not well um but i'm gonna leave the head off so the owner can see what he's got there and if he wants to try and come up with a uh, uh a block for it i'll be happy to to build it back together for him but i've got one or two blocks uh but for this model but they're they're motors i want to keep and put back in service myself so that being said, I'm, uh, it's going to be a wrap on this one as far as uh, me making a phone call or two and letting him get over here and look at what he's got. So as far as the impeller and the lower unit and all that, everything's good. The motor's got tons of good parts on it. So him and I will work something out, I'm sure, on that. And uh, then I've got his, his other motor lined up over here, and we'll take a look at that and see what the facts checks tell us on that one, whether we can proceed or not but uh this one was surely marginal but uh once i dug into her and got to the roots of the problem this mode is on the crack full show so a couple of few cracks so as always that's gonna be one more hack from kodiak and thank you for watching please like and subscribe to inside outboards with your host cody bass